um, I A have a lot to say, and B I kind of run on going quickly. It's just like once it happens, it happens. So um, my name is Benjamin Sugar, and I'm the co-founder of Civic Lab, which is what I'm going to talk to you about tonight. Um, I'm really, really excited to be here. Um, last night, somebody came to present at my class, Design for Empowerment Extended Chicago, about OpenGov, and I was totally blown away from like where OpenGov has come to since I uh, dismissed it uh, a long time ago. So uh, public apology on the TV. Oh, I guess it's just seeing you now. So anyway, um, so public apology to you guys. Really excited about it. So um, the reason why I have not myself been into OpenGov is because that's not actually where I came from. Um, my first project that had anything to do with civics um, is a project called Between the Bars, which is a paper-based blogging platform for people who are incarcerated. And that was something that was uh, developed and run, um, we're now independent, but out of the MIT Center for Civic Media. And interestingly, when you are at that place, nobody's actually working on open gov stuff. It's a different kind of feel for civics and about uh, finding ways to make people's voices uh, heard. Um, so uh, I never really encountered it. I kind of seen it on the side. Um, so one question a lot of people then ask is, what is civic media? And so, wow, still no Futurama people. All right. Anyway, <laughs> this is a, I'm, I'm going to find some nerds who watch Futurama. If I, this joke will kill one day. Anyway, so um, somebody who is in my class, she, uh, I couldn't define it, and she defined it really well, I thought, which is civic media is either A, uh, media that nudges people to care about stuff in their community and or uh, empower people who care about stuff to translate that caring into actions. And this is how you can tell she's a developer. She said where community and stuff and actions are totally variable. <laughs> so um, between the bars, like I said, it's a paper-based blogging platform. And uh, I urge you to go to the site. These are blog posts. We scan them up online. When people get a comment, just like on any other blog, we mail the comment back. When people then, um, uh, the blogger can then respond to the comment. And you can thread the comments, just like any other blog, paper, digital, paper, digital. So that's kind of how I got involved in the civic space in the first place. Um, and uh, so let me begin. So my journey to Civic Lab, um, I didn't come to Civic Lab as an activist or somebody who really, um, you know, I care about things being good, but uh, politics really aren't my thing. They're still not necessarily my thing. Um, but I saw something that really captured um, kind of what we were trying to do when I was in uh, New Orleans. I was in the Lower Ninth Ward, and this is from a place called Our Lady of the First Grocery. Um, and it's kind of like a school, and then they teach kids farming and this and et cetera. And so um, it reads, if you give me a fish, you have fed me for a day. If you teach me to fish, you have fed me until the river is contaminated and the shoreline is seized for development. <laughs> but if you teach me to organize, then whatever the challenge, I can join together with my peers and fashion my own solution. Now, the part that I'm personally interested in is not the organizing part. That's a part that's crucial, and I've been also public apology eventually to organizers, too, who I've already talked to. My interest is in our own solution, which I think is probably your interest, too. Um, this here is the knob of a box fan, and if you probably haven't ever seen a box fan with a red knob before, that's because um, it was custom made at a place called Sprout. Um, Sprout is, one might call it a makerspace, a larger umbrella for things like Sprout, and uh, all these spaces I think would be a peer production space. Uh, here's a picture of Sprout here. This is, it's in uh, Somerville. Uh, people get together. They do makery things. Uh, Sprout's bit is that they want to have a place for community learning and investigation. I think just as you should have a place to go to you know, get hardware, you should have a place to go where you can be helped to learn things you want to learn. Um, and upstairs, they have all your classic making tools. And in the back, of course, they have a 3D printer, just like every uh, peer production space needs to have. Um, it's made up of these parts, and they're open source parts. And so when the time came that this box fan broke, instead of having to go out and buy a new box fan, as I think we do every summer, typically, um, they just printed out their own solution to this problem. And that's kind of a metaphor for what I hope we're doing at Civic Lab. Um, Sprout was very influential to me. It was uh, modeled after something called the Samba School, which was something that Seymour Packer, well, he was the one who discovered them by any means. But Seymour Papert, who's an educational, a constructivist theorist, um, and in practice, he developed turtle geometry. Um, he, um, he found these very interesting, these Samba schools. Because at the Samba schools, you have people there who are like the Barishnikov of um, Brazil. And you also have people who have never danced in their life. And somehow, over time, they get together and they prepare these floats and these dances for um, Carnival in Rio. And there's no structure to it. Um, it just somehow people kind of get absorbed. And this is really in contrast to our schools where it's like, you know, eat what we're telling you. And so he said about educational spaces, he said, in his opinion, um, 
education is a design problem. And this really resonated with me in terms of looking at these peer production spaces and seeing what they're designed for. Um, I think we might all agree that uh, a great deal of innovation has to do with serendipity. But serendipity is very hard to, um, to design for because it's kind of a magical thing that happens. Um, and so we all know what serendipity is. We have these things. We have um, analogies, surprises, errors, um, byproducts, spin-offs. Um, having the wrong hypothesis, having new people come into what you're doing, um, interruptions in your workflow, jokes, dreams, etc. cetera, uh, being playful. And so um, this guy, Peck Van Adel, he talks about in an article called Designing for Unserendipity. He says, so this is a, a problem. that You can't make serendipity happen by its very nature to serendipity. But what you can do is you can have delightful chance encounters through subtle background systems. And you can also utilize aspects of serendipity to deliberately design explicit foreground systems that support insight, discovery, and innovation. And so that kind of brings us to uh, Civic Lab.